everybody and welcome back to the stream. It's Friday and you know what that means. It's time for functional home fitness where we do weight training using objects you can find around the house. Uh, it's Friday the 13th, which usually is not, you know, I don't have triskaidekaphobia. I'm not like afraid of the number 13 or Friday the 13th or anything like that. But I will say <laughs> that there's only been one other Friday the 13th in 2020 and it was in March, and it was the day that everything went to shit. So, you know, in, uh, in 2020, who knows? I hope that today's Friday the 13th has gone far better for you than uh, the one back in March did for all of us in various ways. <sighs> We've made it to the end of the week, which is good. Um, my shoulder is still, for anyone who hasn't been uh, taking class this week. I'm on rest uh, because my shoulder is just uh, not happy with life, the universe and everything right now. So it is definitely telling me to take it easy and I am trying to do just that. So I will still be demonstrating things as usual, uh, but I'm not going to be doing class along with you in the same way that I usually do. Thankfully. Oh, hello, my dear. Hello. Welcome over here. Thanks for taking time out from what I was just about to talk about. Things that, you know, things making us happy right now. Um, and I think I brought this up on stream at some point recently, but uh, uh, today marked the first day of Desert Bus for Hope, which uh, is a, an absolutely fantastic uh, charity fundraising webathon run by Loading Ready Run, um, who are a phenomenal group of Canadian sketch comedians. Um, this is the 14th year, which is blowing my mind, uh, but it just went live this morning in a very different and yet very much the same mode from usual. Usually, you know, they're all gathering together in, in one space and streaming for as long as people keep donating. This year, obviously, that's not possible. So they're, uh, you know, everybody is gathering on stream uh, from their own homes. And let me tell you, I have never respected any group of people as much in my life as I do the tech team working on Desert Bus this year because uh, I can only imagine what extra layers of hell have been added on to an already really involved streaming process. But anyway, irrelevant unless you like me and Amanda love des uh, Desert Bus and Loading Ready Run. But they raise money for Child's Play Charity, which is a really wonderful organization uh, that works with kids who are in hospital with serious diseases um, and works to make their experience there a little less stressful and a little more fun through games toys, video games, that sort of thing. Um, so just bringing joy to children and their families in really serious situations. It's an awesome organization. Um, Desert Bus has raised well over half. Uh, how much have they raised, Amanda? They've raised like a lot of money, like more than a million dollars at this point, right? Over six million, yeah, okay. I knew that my math was off in my head. So they've raised over $6 million over the last 14 years for Child's Play, which is amazing. Um, and they have giveaways and they have challenges and um, everybody is just a really good human. The chat is a really positive and lovely place to be. So uh, I'm taking a quick break <laughs> to come over here and teach, obviously, because my chat is also a great place to be, albeit not quite as many thousands of people. But um, if you uh, are looking for a great cause to support or you're looking for uh, a way to pass time positively uh, or both, um, then uh, definitely head over to, uh, to Desert Bus when we're done with class tonight. You have them open in another window. Yeah, I would have totally kept the stream open as well, except uh, that would be a little too much for stream labs to handle while I'm actually running class. But I'll be heading back over there as soon as I'm done, uh, unless I have to start playing Valhalla because I do have to start playing Valhalla. Ah, these are the difficult choices, my friends. These are the difficult choices 
But you know, it's not a difficult choice taking class. Woo! Um, if this is your first time at Functional Home Fitness, welcome. Here are my two advisories. Uh, one, we are doing weight training with stuff from around our homes, which means we're not using equipment that is specifically designed to tell us, hey, this thing weighs this much uh, with nice handles and grips and all of that stuff. So um, we're not able to load as accurately as we would be in the gym. So if this is your first time, um, air on the side of caution when you are loading yourself up for different exercises. Um, get to know how, how different weights of different objects that you're trying to use feel. And, um, and then, you know, if you do one set and you're like, okay, I really could have loaded more heavily, then, um, then go for it. But uh, start cautiously and then ramp yourself up just because, you know, we're not using things that have 15 pounds written really nicely on the side. So we want to be careful until we have a better sense of the weight of the various things that we grab for this class. The other advisory is more generalized to just free weight training in general, um, particularly for arm exercises where generally one arm is holding one weight, the other arm is holding the other weight. Um, we have a tendency, so we're not symmetrical creatures. We have stronger sides and weaker sides, and we have a tendency to be like, well, I want to I wanna get my weaker side up to where my stronger side is, so I'm going to load myself based on what my stronger side can do, and that'll obviously help, uh, help punch up my weaker side faster, right? No. <laughs> Always load yourself according to what your weaker side can reasonably manage some something that will challenge it uh but not overload it even if it feels a little easier than you would like on the other side because what you're doing if you're overloading the weaker side in an attempt to sort of push its strength growing forward is um your weaker side is not going to be able to manage that weight safely so it's going to have to make weird tweaks to try and complete exercises which means that your form gets impacted and it just sets you up really nicely for injuries that can last you a long time like say my shoulder issue that has been bugging me all freaking week so always load towards what your weaker side can handle not what your stronger side can handle and be smart about how you're building up strength in both sides. All right? Those are the advisories. Um, and I'm really, you know, I, I never forget to give them, but I'm really feeling them today. Ah, uh, because this is annoying. And I don't want any of you to have to deal with it. All right, my loves. But advisories are done. Desert bus plugged. Time for our uh, pre-class checklist. So make sure you have your vessel of water. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh yeah. Yep. Uh I tried to hydrate before class. I probably could have hydrated more, and I'm willing to bet you could too. So always make sure you have your big thing of water with you. We're right next to our kitchen, so it's very easy to get more water. Put your comfy clothes on. Make sure you've got your mat set up or mat sized space on your floor. And if you're using a fitness wearable, uh, you can turn it on to a strength training setting. You don't need to use high intensity interval training because that's not what we're doing today. Uh, and make sure that you have uh, everything that you need for, uh, for actually doing the exercises. So I am realizing that I forgot to get my stuff out. So there's a stock pot. <laughs> you know, here's a book for me to use. And we're really, if this is, sorry for walking off screen there for a second. If this is your first time, we're being serious about just using stuff you can find around your house. Literally, I just, I pulled something off the bookshelf. I've got my laundry. I pulled the stock pot down from my kitchen. And that's what I'm going to use. Because especially right now, a lot of us don't have access to the, uh, types of weightlifting equipment that we would normally use, but that doesn't mean that we don't have access to equipment that's gonna be really good for weight training. So 
Ooh, new sports bras. That's always really satisfying. I could use a new sports bra. All right, my loves. We'll talk about sports bras later. <laughs> um, so you've got everything. You're all set up. It's time for our warm up. So everybody, ooh, everybody, get on your backs, on your mats, one foot crossed over the opposite knee. And we are gonna start with our hip rocks and bridges as soon as you hear the timer go. Make sure that I don't have it blasting. Hey, that's fine, that's fine. So hip rocks and bridges. So I've gotta remind myself that I'm just demonstrating today. So we've got one foot, the ankle is crossed over the opposite knee. Uh, this leg, foot is flat on the floor, knees just pointing up towards the ceiling. And first we are going to contract our abdominal muscles to pull our hips off the floor, just a little bit. We don't have to go super high because it's a warm up. And then put that foot back flat on the floor, come up onto the ball of the foot, and then bridge the hips up like that. And we're just gonna go back and forth between those two, rocking the hips and then bridge and we're just getting started. This is the warm up, so we are not here trying to go for immediate 100% intensity and effort um, because that would just break us down before we had a chance to actually do class. All right, so now you switch to the other side. Some differences you may notice. Um, if you have differences in flexibility in your hips, it you may notice that uh, whichever foot is crossed over the knee, this side may come in a little bit more. So you may notice as you rock the hips up that you get more of a stretch in that hip socket as you lift it because you're pulling this apparatus closer to you. It's almost like doing a, a moving version of the pigeon stretch if anybody's done that in, uh, in a yoga class. So just, we start to, the more we start to notice these little things about ourselves and about our bodies, the more intelligent we can be about our exercise. All right, and that is the big thing. That is the thing that we are going for. All right, so now for our leg sequence, we're gonna come in here lying straight, in a straight line on our side, and we're doing what I call the Jane Fonda. So just nice, leg lifts. I've got my core engaged so that my hips are not rolling either forwards or backwards. And when I say straight line, I mean it. So if you are struggling to feel whether you are in a straight line, well, look at this. The edge of your mat provides a nice yardstick by which to set yourself up and go, okay, so I'm along this line. So this is what it feels like for me to be in a straight line. Now I start lifting my leg, but oh, I can tell that my leg is going a little bit forward of that straight line. So let me engage the glute on that working leg and just keep it in line with the rest of my body, okay? So as we start to learn spatial awareness, as we start to learn more about where our body is in space, so now we've taken that top foot, put it flat on the floor in front of the bottom knee, and we're now lifting the bottom leg like this. Uh, so this is another exercise where we'll start to notice differences in our hip flexibility. So on this side, I can get to the aspirational position without really having to do any uh, additional work. And the aspirational position is me pointing straight up towards the ceiling foot flat on the floor, and I'm just chilling there. I'm not really having to engage any extra musculature back there, and I can just hold that position. My knee is not trying to dive in towards the center, um, and it's really easy because, again, this is my more flexible hip, so it has no problem staying there. And uh, we'll see the difference when we switch to the other side, but first, we're gonna come into our final leg exercise on this side. So we've taken that top foot, put it flat on the floor behind the bottom knee. We're still lifting the bottom leg in the same way. Uh, this is our most relaxed exercise in this sequence. 
you know, I've got the leg open like this, but it's not crossed in front, so there's not the same stability issues. So we're just really stable, foot flat on the floor. We don't need to worry about the hips rolling around, so we can just focus on lifting this leg and just, you know, starting to dig into, okay, what are the different muscle groups that are being actively used as I do this leg lift? Um, which again, the more we can learn about how it feels to move our bodies through space, the more effective we will be at whatever activities we choose to do. So now we're gonna switch over to the other side and we're gonna do the same three things, okay? So you'll notice differences. Maybe this side is easier, maybe it's harder. We are not symmetrical creatures. We always have differences of strength and flexibility and stamina uh, in different limbs. Frequently, those differences are tied to injury states, past injury states, not always. Some of them are just natural differences. You know, it's the kind of thing that we notice first and foremost in the strength of our dominant hand versus our secondary hand, you know? That is a really easy example that most of us have experienced. But when you do more classwork, more weight training, more body weight exercises, you start to notice, okay, which hip is more flexible? Which, uh, which foot and ankle is better at balancing than the other? You know, which arm is stronger at those free weight exercises? And this is all critical information for us to take in and absorb. So we're back, we're doing this on our second side. So again, you can see that if I'm not actively engaging the muscles in my hip socket, then my knee wants to dip forward a bit because I don't have the same degree of natural flexibility in the hip on this side. So I am actively trying to pull that knee back. And it's not as dangerous while we're down here on the floor because we're not putting weight on this leg to have the knee diving in like this. But as soon as we stand up, as soon as we're doing squats of any kind, we want to make sure that our knees are always being held safely straight over our feet. So this is the time to really start digging into that when we're not, when there are lower stakes, you know? All right, so we are on our final exercise on the second side. Again, super relaxed. I'm propping my head up with my arm, just chilling, you know? We're in our, uh, we're in our swimsuit edition beach pose right now. Um, and uh, yeah, you're just digging in, seeing, okay, well, I can feel the engagement of the inner thigh muscles as I lift the leg, but I can also feel a little bit of engagement of the lower abdominals on that same side. Interesting. I never thought about how that, uh, that section of muscle might play into this leg lift, you know? And so we just keep learning, we keep noticing new things about our bodies, how they move, how they interact with different exercises, how different limbs interact with each other. All right, so now we go into our uh, back and hip opening section, starting with our scorpion twist. So I was just doing them just then, but we are planting our forearms on the ground like this, swinging one leg at a time back behind us, trying to get that foot flat on the floor, trying to get that knee pointing up towards the ceiling, but always making sure that our forearms stay glued to the ground, okay? So if you are like, oh, I can totally get here, I just need to raise my elbow a little bit. Nope, you can't get there then, all right? So this provides us a nice safety marker so that we're not trying to over twist. And it also provides us a nice yardstick to measure, you know, week over week. Oh, I can twist a little farther than I could last week. That's really awesome. So always look for those things too. Okay, now we take hold of our imaginary PVC pipe and we're doing our nice big torso rotations. We wanna change directions 
every two rotations or so, just to make sure that we're evening ourselves out because we're only doing this for the one timer interval. So we're not having two timers worth. Um, making sure that you're initiating the circle from the hips. So we're not letting the arms go and then trying to follow after them. The arms are along for the ride. Everything that I do, I rotate using the core and then from the hips and I just fold over and then bring myself up. So it all generates from the hips and everything else just comes along for the ride. All right, now we stabilize, still holding that pole above our heads and now we're doing squats. So this is our first opportunity to check into how our knee positioning from the leg sequence translates into this standing squat position. So making sure that your knees are going straight over your feet, not caving in towards one another at any point, okay? Sometimes we can go down easily enough, but as we start to stand up, that's when the knees start trying to come together. If they are trying to cave in towards each other, no matter where in the position, narrow your stance a little bit and try again and see, okay, can I maintain throughout the whole movement? I can, then this is where I need to do this exercise from for until I build up that additional strength, all right? Now, we're coming in for our Samson stretches. So one leg straight behind us, nice deep lunge, really getting into the front of that hip flexor, lifting the arms straight up towards the ceiling, and then stepping forward and switching sides. So we're not letting our hips open to the side, okay? We want those pelvic bones always pointing forward, no matter where I am in the position, okay? And then just lifting those arms straight up. There's gonna be some bend in the back just by virtue of the stance, but we're not actively trying to do a back bend, okay? So this is just natural curve, natural curve. I'm not trying to reach my arms behind myself or anything like that. We're really focusing in on the hip flexor. All right, and now we come down into a nice wide squat. All right, keeping those knees over those feet, the hands on the knees help, and we're just twisting our shoulders, first one in towards the midline, and then the other, okay? And we're just getting a nice twist in the upper back. Nothing else is moving. We're not bouncing up and down out of that squat position. We're not letting the knee try and dip in as the shoulder comes in. You're just holding that nice wide squat and moving only the shoulders, nothing else, okay? And again, if you're having trouble keeping the knees safely, don't turn your feet out quite as wide and see if you can maintain that position a little more easily, all right? So it's all about finding the modifications that will allow you to do the exercise healthily. All right, so now we're in our cardio section of the warm up, and it's jumping jacks, which thankfully I think we all have innate, an innate understanding of how to do jumping jacks. And uh, we're not doing full intensity, we're still ramping up. So this is us getting our cardiovascular system going a little bit you know, getting our heart rate up a little bit, getting our breathing up a little bit, but we're still not going for, ah, oh God, they have to be the biggest, baddest jumping jacks in the history of the world. No, um, we're still ramping up so that by the time we get to the end of the warm up, we are close to uh, max, you know, we're, we're getting closer to pushing more, to more energy output, but, you wanna make sure that you have enough energy to make it all the way through class. Okay, and now for our kick-throughs. Remember, our kick-throughs are a complicated exercise that even those of us who have been doing 
class for a long time can still struggle with. So never be afraid to take them slowly and deliberately. It was years, I'd say, before I felt confident enough to add the jump in as I'm switching between sides. So the full exercise, kick, jump, kick, jump, kick, jump, okay? But you have to be confident that when you kick to one side, your standing leg will be in the correct position. You have to be confident that you have the shoulder stability to do that jump and move from side to side without your shoulders getting tossed around. So if you're not there yet, don't force it. And now we have burpees, nice wave push-up, keeping those elbows in by the sides, and then a nice big victory clap up at the top, all right? Not a plank push-up, we jump into a plank position, but then hips come down, we do that wave, jump those feet forward, and a nice big clap at the top. Scare yourself. <laughs> I, sometimes I do, you know, you, you get the hand positioning just right, and you're like, oh God, that was really loud, and I wasn't expecting it for some reason. But this is the end of the warm up, so just remember, we're pushing towards the end. We're at max energy for the warm up at this point. We've ramped up nice and deliberately over the course of the last 16 minutes, and now we're gonna get a little bit of a rest while I talk to you about what's next. Oh man. <sighs> good, good job friends. Make sure you're drinking water. Um, this class, it can be easier to forget to drink water because we're not doing the same degree of intensive cardio work that we normally would be doing. So please make sure that your water is always to hand and you are grabbing it every time that you are on break, okay? Mm. Oh yeah. Water, very, very important. Very important, oh man. As are rest weeks, my friends. Let me tell you, I, <laughs> I promised her I would rant about this on stream today. I heard the most infuriating story today from a friend of mine um, who's talking about how she used to do gymnastics when she was uh, when she was much younger, you know, like middle school age. And apparently, um, not only was her team made to work out, you know, uh, do practice seven days a week, but she was told completely untruthfully by her coaches that if you don't work out, um, uh, for more than three days in a row, your muscles will start to atrophy. And I just, I turned into Madeline Kahn from Clue. I had the flames on the side of my face uh, because that A, that is wildly false, and B, y'all know that I am always, always complaining, uh, if not ranting, about the fact that we set people up so poorly for movement starting at such a young age that we train them in these terrible habits. We train them to ignore the signals of their body. We train them to ignore their need for rest and recuperation. And, and here was perfect proof. Like who tells a 12 year old, oh no, if you don't exercise for three days or more, your muscles start to atrophy. It is like, the most insane BS. And I'm still thinking about it hours later, so you can tell it had an impact on me. So I've never been shy about reminding people to rest. And let me tell you, that got me all fired up. I, you know, if the most useful thing I can do in the fitness realm is convince more people that rest needs to be a component of their fitness schedule, then I will have done a good job because now I'm thinking of like all of these other kids who took 
gymnastics from these same coaches who were told the same false information and who, you know, have likely grown up into adults with lots of physical problems <laughs> because they were given such an unhealthy model for movement and fitness and exercise when they were kids. And now, you know, their backs are shot, their knees are shot, their feet are shot. And, and you know, this is not to say that it's much better in the dance world. Um, ballet in particular is just well known for how dangerous it ends up being for people because of the way that dance academies are run, because of the way that companies are run. Um, and, you know, people are out there wrecking their bodies. And it, it, I think it's getting better, but it's really scary to me how much we ruin people's mobility and health um, because we don't teach them how important rest is. And you would think that would be such an easy thing to teach, but man, do we not do it. Uh, oh my God, shot put as a teen, I can't even imagine. I mean, I complain enough about my shoulder issues. I just, oh no. No. And that's this is what happens. I have friends who are dancers whose feet are just falling apart. They're in their mid-30s. Your feet aren't supposed to be falling apart like this. It's it's crazy. And it makes me mad. And you know, it it's unfortunate in some respects that I don't want to do work with, you know, like high school, middle school aged athletes. I don't think that's where my talents lie, but uh, if you have kids um, who are out there doing various activities or team sports or dance or anything like that, please stand up for them and their right to rest, <laughs> okay? Um, stand up for them because they absolutely need it. Yeah, detraining can absolutely happen if you take like a few weeks off. Um, but, uh, you know, any, you're not going to get any sort of a noticeable hit uh, for most, if not all things, in three days. Not even in a week. I, I use the rest week, and, you know, that's what my mentor uses, and it has only ever done positive things for my fitness. I will come back and I will feel reinvigorated and I will feel more strength, more stamina, more power because I took the time to give my body a chance to rest. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, so if you have kids or are close with kids who are in those age groups, you know, anything that we can do to teach healthier habits and to push back against the unhealthy habits that a lot of coaches and, you know, teachers have for these kids, you know, hopefully we can start to change the culture a little bit so we are not, you know, just training people to ignore what their body is saying until it's too late. Uh, all right, my friends. I've yammered on enough about, you know, fitness uh, and rest. So now is not the time to rest anymore. Now is the time to do our sequence. So we have our usual uh, sequence of four exercises. We're going to be going through them four times each, uh, each time with a two minute interval. We will do the appropriate number of reps uh, all in one in, in a row and then use the remainder of that timer as rest. Okay. So our, um, our range uh, for actually for reps for today, um, I'd like the I'd like our range to be let's say twenty to thirty five reps. Okay, so I'm upping it a little bit from where it was during Rocktober, and uh, but I want to maintain a little bit of that challenge. Um, 
So our four exercises, two of them are going to be uh, the same exercise, just on different sides. So we're going to start with our one dumbbell toe raise. So holding whatever weight we have uh, with some sort of a top handle is going to be the best thing. So that's why I'm using this laundry detergent bottle. And I'm going to balance on this foot, on the same foot as the weight. So I'm balancing only on one foot, but I'm standing next to a counter. I can hang on to that to uh, you know, make sure that I'm not worried about maintaining my balance the whole time. And we're just going to be pushing up onto the ball of our foot and then coming down and up and down and up and down. If you are by a staircase, usually I would do these off the back of a stair and that lets your heel come down a little bit lower and it adds to the amount of force that you need to use to drive yourself up. So it just increases the uh, power that you need for the exercise, but you can totally do it off of the floor. That's what I do here because I don't have stairs available to me. Uh, second exercise is gonna be the one dumbbell front raise. And I'm gonna use my stock pot for that because I haven't busted this thing out in a while. Um, and it's a good reminder to be creative with the objects that you're using. So normally I would do this exercise with a single dumbbell um, and just be holding the handle in the center like that. Uh, I'm modifying, so I'm holding this like this and I'm just gonna show you from the side because otherwise the stock pot's gonna block my face. Uh, but I'm just going to lift it up to about shoulder height, okay? I don't wanna be going super high up so about shoulder height, and then down, and lift, and down, okay? Um, then for our third exercise, we go back to those toe raises and just do them on the other side, all right? So same thing for that. And our fourth exercise, we're gonna get into some tricep work. So that's why I busted out a book for that. It's a little easier to manage. I'm gonna lie down on my back, feet flat on the floor, I'm gonna hold this weight above my head, and then I'm gonna bend the elbows and bring it behind my head, and then extend back up. So down and up, and down and up. I like using heavy books for this one. I hold sort of by the bottom of the book, and then that way I can bring the weight fairly far down and then push it back up. All right. So those are our four exercises. And um, as soon as the timer starts, we are basically going. So everybody head on to your mat and get ready for our first exercise, which is those toe raises. And as soon as you hear the horn, we'll begin. Okay. So there we go. So in terms of form, you know, we're holding this weight down here and its job is basically to increase the amount of force that we need to use to push ourselves up. So that's going to increase uh, the effort that our calf has to do. Um, and that's going to in turn help to strengthen the calf a little bit more. The nice thing about leg exercises, we can generally, uh, manage heavier amounts of weight for leg exercises than for arm exercises because we're not actively trying to manipulate the weight. It's not, that's not the point of the exercise. So, you know, I may only be able to use 15 pound weights for most arm exercises, but I can, you know, double that for the leg exercises because all I have to do is hold one dumbbell in place, you know, while I'm doing this or hold it at my side, making sure that I still have my shoulder engaged. So as always, we don't want that weight to start pulling our shoulder down. Huh. You want your shoulder, you don't want it pulled all the way up to your ear. You want it in a normal position, but you want it engaged and stable the whole time. So it's not being controlled by gravity and neither are you. But, uh, but yeah, so 
you know, I know I talked about being a little more conservative with the amount of weight you use if this is your first time in class, but also be aware that for, for our leg exercises in particular, we can generally tolerate much, uh, much higher amounts of weight because we're not trying to move them through the air like, say, now. So for an exercise like this, this one's a little bit unusual for our uh, free weight exercises because it's one, uh, it's one weight. And even if I was doing this with a dumbbell, it would still only be one weight. And so I can go a little bit heavier than I might normally because I have both of my arms to lift it. But I still want to, uh, I still want to pay attention to my capacity, particularly for exercises that really emphasize the use of the shoulders. We talk about the shoulders a lot. They are our most movable joint, which also makes them our most unstable joint. And so one of the things that we really need to dig into when training ourselves is strengthening our shoulders. How do we take a ball and socket joint that's used to being able to go all over Hell's Half Acre and stabilize it, hold it in position, allow it to really manage the weight that is being, that is being held without getting dragged around, okay? This is a critical, critical skill. And so with uh, something like this exercise, I might be able to go a little bit heavier than I would, you know, if I was doing a weight in each arm, uh, like say for lateral raises, but I still want to be careful. I still want to make sure that I am aware of how much pressure I'm putting on my shoulders while doing that. All right, and now we come back and we start doing toe raises on the other side. So all of the same form notes apply all right we're talking about that shoulder engagement it's super important um and we're just digging in making sure that we're breathing the whole time you know this isn't a cardio heavy class we're focused on strength and sometimes when we're doing things that don't remind us to breathe just by virtue of the activity like running you can't go running and not remember to breathe it's just not possible when we do things that are more strength oriented, a little more deliberate in the movement or held actions, it can be easier for us to forget to breathe, uh, essentially to sort of put it aside, downgrade its importance. But it is always important to remember to breathe for a lot of practical reasons and a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, psychological reasons as well. I mean, we're using our muscles and our muscles need oxygen to help them break down the fuel sources that will then be converted into the energy that they are using to do this class. And if I'm over here, you know, holding my breath while I'm doing these or, you know, breathing and then holding a little bit and then breathing again, then suddenly my, uh, my muscles are like, What's going on? I, I, uh, I can use a little help here. And we're not gonna perform as well as we could be because we're not actually bringing the oxygen that we need into our body. So um, when we're doing things that are slower, more steady, uh, or held positions, isometric positions, it is always really important to remind yourself to breathe while you're doing it. All right. And now for our triceps, fourth exercise. Again, slow and steady. Make sure that the amount of weight that you are using is an amount of weight that is safe for both sides. And this visit, I mean, this version of triceps is really, is the most kind to our bodies. Um, because we're just lying on the floor, you know, and we're really getting to focus in 
on the arms and supporting them by the fact that everything else is just here. It's not, I'm not worried about my back going anywhere because my back's laying on the floor. I'm not worried about my balance because I'm not balancing, I'm on the floor. So it's a really nice, sta stable way to get some of this tricep work in. If I was doing this um, in the gym, I'd be using a dumbbell for this. I'm gonna try and get better at telling you what equipment I would be using for various exercises if we were in a gym. Because if you have that equipment at home, please feel free to do this class with that equipment, okay? I, I teach it like this, A, because I don't have that equipment at home, and B, because it's really important to me to help people train their creativity in terms of how, where, when they can exercise. Particularly right now, a lot of us don't feel comfortable going to gyms for obvious, obvious reasons. Um, but we may feel like we don't have the equipment at home that we need to get a good workout. And my goal with this class is to be like, no, you absolutely do. Look at you doing toe raises, just holding a bottle of laundry detergent. I bet you hefted that damn thing every time you've done your laundry and gone, oh, I could weight lift with this. Well, now's your chance. But if you have the equipment at home, go ahead and use it. Absolutely. And you'll still get a great workout. Um, so it's not a requirement that you have to be using laundry detergent bottles and stock pots. Um, th but that is always how I am going to teach this class because the goal of this class is very much focused on let's open our minds to how we can exercise, where we can exercise, um, and let's break down the barriers, the walls that tell us that if we're not in the perfect environment uh, or our exact usual environment that we're just not gonna exercise, you know? Um, that is the biggest barrier for most of us, including myself. That's something I, you know, when I, um, when I was working in healthcare consulting and I was traveling all the time, all the time, um, you know, there were months where I'd be traveling, you know, every couple of weeks and be out of town for a solid week, you know? And uh, it was really hard for me to maintain an exercise program because I would leave town and I'd be like, well, I can't do my normal class and I'm in this unfamiliar space and like I could go to the, the hotel gym, but you know, you never know what equipment they have and, and oh, I forgot to bring my uh, exercise clothes with me and you know, all this stuff. And so you end up, uh, as we're going back into our one dumbbell front raise, you end up finding all of these ways to talk yourself out of exercising. And um, you know, the last seven, eight months, I don't even, eight months? Is it eight months at this point? Time has no meaning anymore. Um, the last most of 2020 has broken down a lot of people's usual routines. Uh, a lot of people's access to their usual workout spaces and activities has been curtailed. And when that happens, it can be really hard. And when we don't, you know, we feel out of control, we don't feel like we understand how to set up anything different. So we, you know, we just stop exercising or we spend all this time refreshing the pages for various uh, weight kits at home in the desperate hope that we'll be able to find something. It's insane how hard it is to find at home exercise equipment right now. It's like, it, it is, yeah, the, the industries, I mean, there are a lot of obvious industries that have, uh, have benefited from, from uh, quarantine measures, but uh, a couple of the ones that I, didn't necessarily see coming, and I should have, 
are companies that make uh, at-home exercise equipment, you know, weights, uh, lifting, uh, lifting racks, um, kettlebells, dumbbells, and stuff like that, and cycling companies. Because suddenly everybody is working out at home uh, or wanting to find activities that they can do you know, in a safer environment, cycling obviously being one of them. Um, and so everybody's buying everything up and we're having these, these runs that nobody could have predicted. Um, but if you weren't lucky enough to get that dumbbell rack at the beginning of quarantine and suddenly they're harder to find than, uh, you know, the lost city of Atlantis, then it can be really demoralizing. So I always want to use this class as a way to remind us that there are so many things lying around our homes that we can use for exercise. You got a couple of bottles of the same wine, you could use that for, uh, for curls or hammer curls. You got a stock pot filled with books and you can keep ramping up the amount of load that you're doing. Like there is so much, there is so much that we can do. Um, and it's really exciting when you start to open your mind to those possibilities and then you, you go, oh, I really can get a really awesome workout just in my living room and I don't have to get down on myself for not having all of that fancy equipment. Exhale on effort. That is a great way to put that, Steve. Thank you. Yeah, exhale on, on effort is, uh, is a per the perfect way to describe that. And we use our exhales uh, to help sort of push us and power us. We can also use them as inspiration when we get into like dramatic breathing and war cries and all of that stuff. You know, I've talked about how, uh, how assigned male at birth folks tend to be a lot more comfortable uh, being really loud and, and proud with their breathing in, in gym settings and, you know, not afraid to make, uh, make various loud cries. And I love that because it can really help. At the very least, it can give you a psychological boost, remind you that you're working hard, and help to inspire you to push a little harder. Uh, so I always recommend that everybody, at the very least, uh, practice not being ashamed of being heard when you breathe, okay? Um, so if I'm, you know, that, that exercise with that amount of weight is not as much of a, a, an effort for me, but like if I was here doing upright rows, I am not going to be ashamed to breathe and to breathe loudly, okay? That's how we're powering ourselves. That's how we're fueling ourselves. So if you have struggled uh, in gym settings with feeling a little self-conscious about making noise and taking space. And a lot of us are socialized that way. So it's totally understandable. So one of the great things that we can do while we're working out here at home in our living rooms, there is no one around to, to even like give us the hint of what's that weird person doing. So I want you to practice being as dramatic and loud and present with your breathing and your exercise as you want to be, okay? And I want you to take that confidence with you as you go through all these exercises. All right, my loves, we are halfway through. So we are coming back around for our third of four, starting again, as always, with those toe raises. So check back in on your form. Now is a great time. We've been going for a while. You've been really pushing out those reps. Um, you, you may be getting a little bit of fatigue going. So let's really start to think about our form, making sure that it is just as good here in our third go around as it was in our first. 
and making sure that it's going to be just as good in our last go around as it was in our first, okay? Um, we always want to start up our next sets and do that form check-in. Um, I don't have to, I've been on enough rants today. I don't think I need to rant about the importance of form. Y'all know how I feel about that. But, um, you know, it, it's always important to do that, that check-in, but it becomes more and more important uh, the farther we go through a set, um, the more fatigue that we start to feel in those muscles. You know, at this point, depending on the number of reps you're doing, depending on the amount of weight that you're doing, you may be feeling, okay, this is definitely a little bit more intense than it was when I started at the beginning. So I really need to focus in, center my brain and go, okay, how is my form looking? Um, how am I feeling about it? Am I worried that there are any components of it where I might start falling out? No? Awesome. Maybe? All right, let's keep an eye on that, okay? So the farther through we go, and here we are going into our third set of the one dumbbell front raises, the farther through that we go, the more important it is to do those form check-ins with ourselves and to pay attention, again, as always, to the signals our body is sending us, okay? We don't want to get to a point of utter failure, all right? Uh, we're, we're, uh, we're not doing reps to the point of failure right now, which would be a harder thing for me to manage in a, a virtual class anyway. But um, yeah, so you should never be getting, uh, getting to the end of these sets and getting to a place where you're like, if I do one more rep, I'm gonna completely lose all control over, over this weight that I'm managing. But you're still going to experience fatigue and it is still gonna start to have an impact on how easy it is to maintain that form. So dig in, do those checks. We're on our third set right now so there's only one more set um you know make sure that you're checking in hopefully all of you uh are able to ramp up the amount of weight if you've been feeling you know if that laundry detergent bottle is not uh, not quite heavy enough for you this is why bags with books in them are fantastic because we can keep upping that amount of weight pretty easily they usually have nice convenient handles that make it a lot easier for us to hold and manage. And uh, in that way, we can continue to, uh, to challenge ourselves, to push ourselves to new levels of performance. All right, all right, coming back around to our second side for the toe raises. Again, check in on that shoulder, make sure it is nice and engaged and managing that weight, not letting the weight drag it down, okay? Very, very important. It's one of the reasons we do things like farmer carries, you know, practicing really making sure that we have the strength and stability in our shoulders to hang on to that weight, okay? And to not let it throw us around, so. Always paying attention to that. Sit down for a second. Y'all know what you're about and I need some water because I've just been talking a lot. Mm. And these classes are only like an hour and a half. You know, I do, I do have intentions of doing, you know, this channel will always be primarily focused on fitness, but um, I do hope to get like a rest day stream off the ground at some point uh that's a more traditional you know video game stream but i will have to be ready for a whole different level of stamina um and the ability to to keep talking and to keep that engagement going for you know a couple of hours at least which is a whole different ball game so my hat is always tipped to uh, 
all of my favorite streamers who were able to do two, three, four hours um, in front of the camera and make it look easy, you know? I aspire someday when I actually have a setup for uh, streaming video games, which I most certainly don't right now. Mm. All right, coming back around to those tricep extensions. So, from the mat, huzzah. And ah, just making sure that we're using a safe amount of weight, okay? And you can see, you know, if, uh, if one of your arms is struggling with the amount of weight that you're using, it probably won't be as noticeable on an exercise where both, again, where both hands are being used to manage the weight. But, um, you know, I can, I can still see there's a little more trembling in my weaker side. Uh, I can notice it having to, having to work a little bit harder. And uh, again, these are all things that we want to really pay attention to. We want to learn as much as we can about our bodies and about what they can do, what they need help with, what they shouldn't be doing, um, and really dig ourselves in and, uh, and make sure that we are exercising as safely as possible so that we can continue to challenge ourselves and continue to achieve our goals without hurting ourselves, okay? There is a way to do both. We do not have to be exercising seven days a week. In fact, we shouldn't be. Um, and uh, it, yeah, yeah, if I, if I can help you with nothing else, Aside from uh, aside from that, I will be quite pleased. All right, my friends, we are coming in to our final set. All right, so last time on this first side for our toe raises. So really check in, exhaling on the effort. Steve, thank you so much. Uh, I will probably start using that a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, here we are, final run. So maybe see if you can up the amount of weight or up the amount of reps from what you've been doing in the previous sets, okay? See if you can add five or 10 reps on. Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> All right, just see what you can do. We're here at the end, which means it's not as flashy as our cardio hit classes, but we still, as we come into the end, of class, we're still at that place where we're like, okay, I don't need to be saving up all that energy for the next round because here I am, I'm going, I'm going through the last round. So uh, really see what you can do. See what pockets of energy you have hidden away for each of these exercises and, uh, and really try and Put as much of that energy, as much of that power into these last sets as you can. Because, uh, oh man, we'll be done soon and then you'll get to rest and it'll be so glorious. Ha! Huh. Nothing like a little weight training on a Friday night. Am I right? Am I right? It's just a wild, a wild Friday in front of our laptops lifting laundry detergent bottles because I know how to live it up and you clearly do too. <laughs> All right, our last time through for our one dumbbell front raises. So I, as with many of these arm exercises, I'm just holding a nice stable position. You know, I've got my feet about hip width, maybe slightly wider, and I've got my core and my glutes engaged so that everything else is nice and stable, and the only thing that's focused on moving are my arms from the shoulder. This is a single joint exercise. Only one joint 
is moving here, okay? So really make sure that everything else in your body is nice and controlled. We don't need, you know, our back, our chest sticking out unexpectedly or going over here. We don't need to be dragged forward by this weight as we're lifting it. We wanna make sure sturdy trunks and then just lifting and lowering and lifting and lowering, okay? Oh man, what a nice class. This is our first, this is our first non-Rocktober class in five weeks, which is crazy. And this is probably going to be the last class of this particular format for a while. I, I have been planning for a while to, um, to switch up how I structure this Friday class to uh, make it a little bit more engaged. Um, I like this setup, but the like really intensive, you know, weight training where we're focused on the number of reps kind of a thing, I'm not positive that it translates well. Um, so what I want to do is something a little more akin to my in-person classes, um, which use a combination of equipment and body weight exercises. And I think that I am going to see about redesigning this class so that there's a bit more um, of overlap between the two and maybe using a little more variation in the types of timers that I'm using, that kind of stuff. Um, if you have strong opinions for or against, let me know. It won't necessarily change my decision, but it's good information for me to have. But, uh, and you know, if we do it a couple of weeks and it really doesn't feel right either, then we'll keep, uh, we'll keep seeing what we can do. But yeah, as a, as a note, especially for those of you who are regular Friday attendees, um, I'll be playing around with things a little bit more over the coming weeks and uh, seeing if we can find uh, a new fun setup structure for this class. Because, you know, it's good to change things up uh, every once in a while. And, you know, Rocktober was a great way to do that. Rocktober, I had so much fun over Rocktober and I hope that you did too. And I'm definitely going to do more programs like that in the future. Um, but it's also good to, you know, dig into the classes and see what format changes uh, and shakeups we can do. And that's, you know, it's something that keeps the material fresh for me to teach, keeps the material fresh for you as a student, uh, re-engages our brains so that we're making sure that we're fully engaged with what we're doing and just a lot of positive impact. So just something to think about. All right, here we are, our final run. So again, exhaling on effort, remembering that everything else is nice and stable. Um, you can engage your, while you're lying on your back like this, you know, sometimes it can be like, it can feel like, oh, my lower back is really curving. So it can be nice to engage your core muscles and just add a little bit of a pelvic tilt to flatten out the back against the floor. Obviously it's not the focus of the exercise, but it is, uh, is definitely, definitely something that can be helpful so that you don't feel like you're, uh, you're twisting in weird ways that you weren't expecting. Oh man, I'm just gonna sit over here because y'all have got this covered. And this is our last exercise. Soon that final horn will go off, which will be really exciting. Mm. Ah, I almost dumped water all over myself, which uh, yeah, that would have been great. Woohoo! Uh, but I didn't, so that's also a good thing. Oh man, it's Friday night. I, yeah, it's been, it is eight months now, isn't it? That is, that is wild. When I think 
about the beginning of this year and, uh, you know, just starting to hear about COVID and, uh, you know, not appreciating the, uh, the danger um, and how confident we all were that it was going to get handled within a couple of weeks. You know, it's like, oh, cool. We just have to quarantine for a couple of weeks and we should be fine kind of a thing. And now here we are eight months later, uncontrolled spread in 49 out of the 50 states. Um, one of my good friends was just diagnosed with it. And I'm just like, <laughs> okay, fair enough. Many of us were confident, uh, not all of us. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just, it is so strange to think of how much and yet how little time has passed. Um, I can't believe that we're already in November. Like this year, this year has managed to simultaneously trudge and speed along. And uh, nice, nice. That's good, and you're doing the quarantining and, and all of that jazz. As if you have the ability to do it safely, and if everybody in that group is going to do it safely as well, then I, I am very happy for you. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things where I, my parents live several thousand miles away um, across an ocean, and you know, I am not expecting to see them in person again uh, for probably at least another year. I, I lucked out that my mom came through town at the beginning of March for a... Uh, oh, yeah, you and your mom. Oh, then that'll be fine. That'll be great. Yeah, my mom came through town at the beginning of March after a trip with her sisters. Um... And so we got this unexpected visit because usually I see my parents once a year uh, for Christmas. And we got, so we got this unexpected visit and I'm so glad that we did because now I'm like, well, will I get to see them in 2021 or will it legitimately be 2022 before uh, they feel comfortable being on a plane and I feel comfortable with them being on a plane? Like, who knows? Who freaking knows? And you know, there's a lot to be grateful for that this is happening in 2020 and not, say, even 2010, because the number of ways that we have to communicate and keep in contact with people from a distance are so varied at this point. And that, that is a huge relief, you know, getting to do Zoom calls or Discord meetups or Google Hangouts, getting to join you all here on Twitch and, you know, you can see me and I can see the chat and, and we can gather together this way, like, you know, phones and, and just, there are so many communication pathways that did not exist for most of us. Uh, while we were growing up and it's it is I I feel so lucky because I cannot imagine what this would have been like uh, if I didn't have the ability to to do video calls with people um, I just it would have been an even more untenable situation um, I'm just thinking about this a lot because of course yeah it's just wildly massively out of control here in America and and everyone all at the government level down is like not wanting to shut down again because the economy and I'm like I mean uh, y'all know that I'm not a fan of late stage capitalism and I also am not a fan of the people who consider the economy to be the stock market and not people's ability to not starve in the fucking streets. But, um, but it's just, 
mind blowing to me that we are playing with people's lives rather than doing everything that we can to create scenarios in which the greatest number of people can stay home, can be physically distanced and not be, have to choose between that or being homeless, you know? It's nuts. And, and yeah, Amanda's talking about small businesses. We're not, we're not doing anything to care for small businesses, for restaurants. Like, we should be paying restaurants to stay closed right now and giving them the ability to feel that they can stay closed and they can continue to pay their employees and then be able to reopen again on the other side. But we're not, you know, we are not, we are not giving people the stability and the safety to actually take appropriate safety measures for this. And so we are constantly for, and more and more as the year has gone on, forcing people into this terrible uh, Sophie's choice of, well, how do I want to die by a really horrifying virus that could either kill me or turn me into a long hauler with lifelong complications and chronic conditions? Or do I want to die kicked out on the street, freezing and hungry because I missed my rent a few too many times and got evicted? Like, it's just horrifying. It's horrifying. We, we are not caring for each other well. Um, and I, I unfortunately am not in a position to help with that, right? You know, it's one of those things where it's like, well, I, as an individual who I guess technically is almost a business owner, but that business is me, <laughs> I am the only person who I can, uh, I can control in, uh, in terms of supporting myself and, and supporting my ability to not be out there in danger as much as possible. Um, you know, it's, it's hard. I've been thinking about this a lot. You know, the, the spikes in Colorado are getting really scary. We've gone back to, at the very least, safer at home, you know, level orange or something like that. I don't know. They, they, they don't want to do that stay-at-home order. Uh, I really wish they would, <laughs> you know, but everybody's like, well, we don't want to ruin the economy. And I'm like, does it ruin the economy to have hundreds of thousands of your fellow citizens in hospitals uh, <laughs> or ending up with chronic conditions that they will have to manage for the rest of their lives that will get in the way of your all-important deity of productivity I, eh. I'm ranting about a lot of things tonight my friends the bottom line is I want you all to stay safe and I hope that you're doing as much as you can to do that and I recognize that many of us do not have the luxury of working from home uh, many of us have to leave the house and have to interact with lots of other people uh, people in grocery stores, people in restaurants and bars, people in coffee shops, you know, and I wish it wasn't so, and I am angry on your behalf, and I will continue to try and figure out what I can do to either A, support those people, or B, push our governments to actually take steps to take care of the population in a way that doesn't involve going well let's let's hold off as long as we can and see you know if for some reason it just magically decides to go away because that's likely <sighs> anyway friends i think you've sat here listening to me rant about covid for more than enough time <laughs> and, um hopefully you've been hydrating through that whole thing but that's the end of class Hey, we've made it. We've made it to the end of class. We've got one more class this week on the broadcast schedule. It is tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Uh, weekend kickoff, an awesome strength and stamina focused bodyweight class. Amanda, drop the name of your husband's store 
uh, in the chat so that anybody in uh, in that area can go and support an awesome local game store. Um, it's sadly not local to me or I'd be supporting them all the time. But if it's local to you, uh, yeah, you should uh, support your local game stores, support your local bookstores, support, uh, support any small business that you know of and feel financially able to support. Um, Cause yeah, we want them to survive. Battleground games and hobbies. Yeah, three, three locations. So many choices, my friends. So if you have gaming needs, support a local business. And you're in Massachusetts, I guess is the other part of that. Um, but yes, weekend kickoff tomorrow, 9 a.m. It's our last class of the week. And then we restart next week. Y'all can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All of those handles will be in my end cards, but they're all variations on Blanche Case Fitness. My YouTube channel is where I upload the VODs from these streams and where I'm going to be putting a lot of additional content, uh, forum videos, stretching sequences, warm-up overviews, and that kind of thing. So head over there and subscribe. Um, if you want to help support me financially during uh, crazy pandemic times. Um, I do have a coffee account, Blanche Case Fitness. Donations are always very much appreciated. And we're also rounding rounding the corner on Twitch affiliate here. Uh, just need four more followers and we need to get uh, the average viewer account up um, to three, I think it is. So we're getting really close. So if you wanna help, uh, get us there, you know, then to the point where I can start having actual subscribers to the channel and, you know, start doing lots of, lots of fun stuff, uh, then please do follow the channel and, uh, uh, tell your friends, loved ones, coworkers, anybody else looking for an awesome workout. Very much appreciated. Um, please stay safe. Wash your hands and wear a mask if you have to. Leave the house. Um, do what you can to support your friends and loved ones who maybe do not have that flexibility, are you know experiencing more financial instability because of the pandemic. Um, if you live in Georgia, please, please vote in your Senate runoff races. Very, very important. <gasps> Look at that, see? Steve is 15 minutes away from the Saugus uh, location. Awesome. I have, I have introduced a good person to the store of good people, and I feel good about that. Um, yeah, let's do what we can to take care of each other uh, while we try to move through winter safely, while we continue to uh, do our best to stabilize our democracy and then continue to really push forward the activism that we need to push forward to build a better, more just version of the United States. Um, and I love you all. And I love these classes. And hopefully I will see some of you back here tomorrow morning. Mwah. Have a great night. And go watch Desert Bus.